the class today we are going to discuss uh, public key distribution. Uh, let me remind you what we discussed so far. Uh, so we discussed the cryptography uh, fundamentals, and we discussed two types of cryptographic algorithms: symmetric key cryptography and symmetric key cryptography. Under symmetric key cryptography examples, we discussed sort of cryptographic algorithms, the operational mode, and then when we move on to the symmetric key encryption, we discussed several symmetric key cryptographic algorithms. Usually, a symmetric key cryptography also called as public key crypto system. So, so when we discuss the public key cryptographic algorithm, uh, I I hope you realize that they are kind of complicated mathematical uh, cryptographic algorithm. So those algorithms require kind of high processing. So comparing to the symmetric key encryption. Public key cryptographic algorithms basically require high processing power. So because of that, uh, they usually slower than the symmetric key encryption. So when you want to do bulk encryption, uh, encrypting data in between uh, different communication channels, uh, we usually use symmetric key cryptography. However, by by default, symmetric key cryptographic algorithm has uh, problems, issues with the uh, key distribution. In the symmetric key system, how do you going to distribute the key between the sender and the recipient is an issue. And also we, uh, I mentioned that, how do you kind of, how many keys we require to do with uh, proper communication is also a problem with the symmetric key cryptography. We have introduced the symmetric key cryptography uh, systems to do so. Using the symmetric key cryptography system, basically we can uh, distribute the symmetric key. So in the symmetric key scheme, uh, require the secret key. So a symmetric key scheme basically used to distribute those symmetric keys. So in the symmetric key system, as I mentioned, most difficult problem is the distribution of the keys. A symmetric key system used to solve that problem. So, first public key or symmetric key cryptography algorithm in the world is the DC Hellman cryptographic algorithm. In the DC Hellman cryptographic algorithm we studied in very detail. So, those algorithms you realize what they do is establishing the uh, session key, that is the symmetric key. So, then the symmetric key is used to uh, communicate. Uh, so the idea of this session key is what we call it as the key encryption key. So after establish this session key, using that session key we can exchange several encryption keys. So that's how the public key uh, systems helps uh, to operate the symmetric key system. So so in the DC Hellman uh, algorithm is directly used for such key exchange. In addition to this uh, DC Hellman cryptographic uh, algorithm, uh, so we can use even RSA cryptographic algorithm to distribute the symmetric key. So we will discuss today how we could, in general, use public key systems uh, to exchange those session keys. So if I emphasize again why we need such uh, encryption system. Uh, uh, why we need public key cryptography for the key exchange? Uh, because mainly symmetric key systems they have to use the same key, same key for at the recipient and the same key at the sender side. So then, the only solution to distribute this key in between these two parties is the public key system. So, as I mentioned, we can use directly this Hellman like key argument protocol to do so, or else we can use RSA like key uh, protocol to distribute those symmetric keys. Uh, so, the key which we distribute through this system, usually call it as session key or the master key, I actually call it as key distribution key, master key. So, the master key is used to create the session key. 
So since we since we combine public and uh, symmetric and asymmetric system together in the practical applications, we usually call those practical cryptographic protocols as hybrid cryptographic examples of hybrid cryptographic protocols. Let's study how how theoretically we could uh, distribute uh, we could use uh, public key system to uh, distribute those session keys. So in the very simple setup of this public key system, look like that. You may see here uh, there are parties, uh, two parties in the network called A and B, Alice and Bob, uh, and they basically uh, have public private keys generated. They are private keys stored in their machines. So green keys are their private keys. And then assume they have the public keys, the yellow keys. So those public keys assume at the moment we deposit on a server. Let's say, let's see, let's say this is a key distribution server, right? We assume at the beginning, we assume we uh, deploy those public keys just in this key distribution server, right? This is our initial setup. Private keys in very uh, restricted environment or any kind of like stored in their personal devices. Public keys in the public space where anyone can access. Now our uh, now our problem is how do you going to uh, distribute a session key in the setup? In in simply in this setup, what we can do is uh, let's say A and B wants to talk. And the keys are stored in the place that we call key distribution server, as I said. So the simple setup is A can go to this server and fetch the public key of B and encrypt that session key using that public key and then send to B. B can decrypt it using his private key. So let's see something like that. So this is the session key where A wants to send to B. So what A can do, A go to this public server, fetch the public key of B, like here. So using that public key B, he encrypt that session key and distribute to them. After encrypting this session key using the public key, no one can open it. Only the key which used to open it belongs to B. So then, only B can apply his private key and get access to the session key. So that's a simple setup where we can distribute this key from this side to the other side. So however, if you do this thing, we may face some issues. The first issue we face, after we receive this session key, we have no idea where, he, where this key comes from. Perhaps A, when, the, when distributing this key, can say, this is A, I am sending this key to you. But after we receive this packet, we have no idea whether this packet from A or someone else. So for example, let's say there is a bad guy here called C. He wants to cheat B. What C can do? C go to this public server, fetch the public key of B, and then create a session key encrypt that session key with the public key of B and sends to that B saying, hello, I am A. So this is the session key to communicate with A. So when that key received B, B might assume that is A and encrypt that data using the session key he received, but it is actually not from A, it's from some bad guy C. In other words, when we receive that encrypted session key, we should know where this key comes from. That means we need some authenticity. How do you achieve authenticity in this public key system? We already learned about it. If we want to achieve authenticity in the public key systems, or symmetric key systems, what we have to do is encrypt some data with a private key. That means actually signing. So what you have to do is digitally sign this session key. So in, in order to achieve the authenticity then, what should A do? A create the session key, 
they can encrypt that session key using his private key. So sends that private key to B. So then B can verify that using the public key of A. So by verification, after verifying with the public key of A, B knows, okay, this is correctly verified. So B knows then it's exactly from A. However, you know, if you do that, not only B, anyone can get the public key of A and then verify it, or oh, verify mean decrypt that, decrypt that, and then anyone can access to that key. So in other words, so in if you use this first scenario, encrypting using the public key of B and sending, provide the confidentiality, that means nobody will assure that, and nobody will access that, we can assure only B can access this key using his private key. But there we don't get the authenticity. So in the second scenario we discussed, we encrypt it using the private key, that's what we call signing, and then says to B. So then B can verify your decrypting using the public key. So that provides the perfect authentication. However, this scenario we don't have confidentiality. So in the first scenario, we have confidentiality, but no authentication. In the second scenario we discussed, we have authentication, but not the confidentiality. But if you want to properly distribute this session key between A and B, we need to have both. That means we need to have confidentiality and authenticity. In other words, we need to know who sends that key in the first. Second, we should be assured nobody will access this key. So how do you assure both properties? If you want to do this both properties, <coughs> a simple way of doing it, actually doing this double encryption. Double encryption. How do you do such double encryption? It's very simply, in this, in the third scenario, the proper scenario, what we can use for those key distributions is something like here. So first of all, we generate the session key, A generates the session key. So we need to make sure, and we need to prove that A is the person who created that, or that A has to encrypt it using his private key. That means A has to sign the session key. After that, A wants to make sure no one access that. For that, A go to the server, press the public key of B, and encrypt that session key with this public key of B. So then it provides the confidentiality. The two, two layer of encryption. This first layer encrypting using private key for the authentication purpose. The second layer encrypt again that packet using the public key that's for public key of B, that's for confidentiality. So this double, double encrypted packet will send to the B. So then we can receive that. First of all, we have to remove the outer encryption. So that could be removed using the private key of B. After it's removing by applying the private key of B, B knows no one will access that because B is the party who have access to this public uh, private key. So it's confirmed the confidentiality. Then we want to confirm the authenticity. For that, we have to go to the server and fetch the public key of A and verify it, the signature that means inner encryption using the public key of A. Two, two, two kinds of uh, verification. First, decrypt using the private key of B. Second, decrypt. The second decryption, we call it as signature verification with the public key of A. So that is how we do perfect key distribution using a public key system uh, between A and B. So in order to do this work this scenario, most important factor now is how do you going to distribute this public key? So here what we discuss is how do you going to distribute this particular session key. So this session key will nicely distributed using this public key system. 
in this scenario we assume a and b deposit this public key into a central server called p server so in other words we assume public key distribution to the parties is via a central server so let's discuss uh, now how do you going to distribute those public keys? whether we can distribute it using a central server or do we need to have some other mechanism to distribute those public keys because in the session key distribution is perfectly work if we perfectly distribute the public key so for example if some attacker perhaps can access this server here this server here and replace those public keys maybe attacker can replace the public key of b with his public key so then a might think this is b's public key but it is not the b's public key it's some attacker's public key so you see so we 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 are design the system to distribute a symmetric key so that system is nicely designed so that is fine but in order to work that system we need to have a proper mechanism of distributing the public key of the end users because in order to use this system everybody a or b should be able to access the correct public key so when they are accessing this public key a should know this is actually b's public key b should know this is actually a's public key that means we need a mechanism to authenticate the public key or in other words we need the method to distribute public key in a proper way the, that is the most important thing and that is the most difficult thing in this public key cryptography in practically how can i make sure Bob's public key is really belongs to Bob, not to the Charlie or somebody else. How can we make sure that? So just depositing the key, sir, as I said at the beginning, it's not a practical thing, not really a feasible method. The practical method we are using for that, it's called it has a certification authority or uh, some kind of organization. so they call it as digital certificate authority as well so the role of this organization is to certify the public key distribution in other words those certification authorities certifying uh, ownership of the public key they certify whether this public key belongs to a or b they certify this public key belongs to b like that how this certification authority do so certification authority do so again use in the public key system that is interesting thing and we need to be carefully study this uh, to understand how it works so so this the certification authority has to certify this public key belongs to a and this public key belongs to b if they want to do so they have to digitally sign those digitally sign those public key so so in that's how they do so for example the certification authority is issuing kind of digital document which we call it as public key certificate certified by them certification authority how do they certify they have to digitally sign how do they digitally sign using their private key Let, let's discuss let's discuss the scenario certification authority so certification authority basically are the organization which binds the public key into the particular user or the entity that means the web server or a end user so any entity can register with the certification authority and then provide the proof that he is a or b or a web server and request a certification to his public key so obviously the entity has to submit his public key so then certification authority issue a digital document call it as public key certificate which certify the authenticity of the public key so that document 
provide the authenticity of the public key. So if I repeat that, so there is a Bob, need the identity information. <coughs> then Bob submit certification authority, the public key of Bob, public key of Bob, Bob submit to the certification authority with his identity information. So then the certification authority generates a detailed document, call it as a public key certificate, which bind his identity information to the public key. So that document is digitally signed by the certification authority. That means this document is digitally signed by the private key of certification authority. So this digitally signed document distribute to the world. So that is called as Bob's public key certificate. So Bob's public key certificate digitally by, signed by the this particular certification authority. Right. So then someone who has this certificate need to verify the validity of this public key certificate. In order to ver verify the validity of certificate, so that person has to access the public key of certificate in authority. So basically, the public key certificate signed by the certification authority. So before accepting the validity of this public key certificate, so parties have to verify the signature of this certificate. So in order to verify this certificate, the party you're going to verify need to access the public key of the certificate. So how can they access the public key of the service? So as you may realize, we are entering into the recursion recursive problem. So for example, so I repeat. So we have a problem, initial problem. The, our initial problem is how do we going to distribute a symmetric key between the A and B? So for that, we have introduced a solution based on the public key cryptography. Solution was using the public key cryptography, we encrypt and sign the session key and exchange between A and B. So the solution is perfect. In order to this solution work perfectly, we need to properly distribute the public key of end user. So that means, so party who accessing those public keys should make sure this public key belongs to the proper end entity, that is A or B. So in order to do that, we have introduced uh, additional authority called Public Key Certificate Authority or the CA. So then the CA issue a pub, the document called Public Key Certificate, digitally signed by his private key to those entities. So in order to verify this Public Key Certificate, so now we need the public key of CA. So then we are having the problem, how do you distribute the public key of CA? So are we going to introduce another authority certifying those public keys? Or how? How do we do that? We will discuss in a minute. Right. So I will show you a real public key certificate and how it looks like. And end of the lecture, towards the end of the lecture, I will show you how to create our own public key, public private key certificate, uh, public private keys, and how do you generate public key certificates. Also, I will show you towards the end of this lecture. So, in, in usually, the public key certificate has different fields. It's called as a version number, serial number, signature algorithm, because it's a digitally signed document, it has signature algorithm. Issuer, that is owner of the public key. Uh, issuer is actually CEA, certification authority name, and the subject, owner of the public key. And this issuer certifying this ownership to a certain period. So that call it has a validity period of public key certificate. And then there is a field called sub public key information. So in that field, we will see the public key of the end entity. And then there is a field called extension. So the extension field has some other parameters. 
Finally, we have a digital signature of this entire document, what we call it as public certificate. I will repeat that in a minute by showing a real public key certificate. So when in the public key certificate, there are three fields which kind of mandatory. So they, they are called as issuer, who is issuing that, owner, who is owning this public key, and the public key information. So public keys, you know, we have different public key algorithms, and those public keys belong to one of these algorithms. So public keys, some numbers, you know, so yeah, in RSA is uh, E and N. So you know those now, detail. And these are the public keys. So then we need to have a mechanism to name, issuer, and the owner. So there is a standard which describes those fields. So let's call it as X509 public key uh, standard. X509 ISO public key cryptography standard, which describes the structure of this public key system, the certificate. Similarly, that standard further describes the field of the owner and the issuer. When you're naming your owner and the issuer, so we have to follow a Standard called distinguished name standard. So those these distinguished name standard describes eight fields which we can use to uniquely identify end entities on the internet. So those eight fields are country, state and province, locality, organization name, and organization unit name, common name, email and the URL. So among them, common name is important. When you get a public key certificate to the NFT, you have to give a correct common name. So for example, if you obtain, if you want to obtain a public key certificate to a web server, so the common name must be the name of the, the domain name of the web server. Common name must be the domain name of the web server. If you obtain a public key for the humans or end entity human, uh, so the common name should be his name, human name. And the email address is also important. So in case you want to use this public key for protecting the email communication, I will show you how to do it in my last lecture. So there, we must use our email address, correct email address in the field of email. Otherwise, this public key may not be able to use with the email. So similarly, if you obtain a public key for the web server, the domain name of the web server should be in the common name. Otherwise, we may not be able to use this public key certificate in uh, web servers, especially configuring the TLA. So similarly, in the public key certificate, we have identified six types of public key the uh, public key infrastructure. So those public key certificates are only for a commercial purpose. Only for commercial purpose. So any public key certificate basically certifies the public key of end user. So that means, so that public key certificate can be used for any purpose. This public key can be used for any purpose. But uh, when the certification authority certifying those public keys to end users, they restrict the usage. Restrict means they say, I am taking the liability if you use this public key for signing purpose. I am taking the liability if you use this public key for maybe key exchange purpose. Like that, end entities, uh, certification authorities kind of categorize this public key certificate, or what we call it as type of public key certificate. We can see different types. So the first type called digital signature public key certificate. That means if you, in case if you want to use your public private key for digitally signing purpose, you must request public key certificate in this type. So then there is a type called key and size one type of public key certificate. In case you want to use this public key for exchanging the symmetric key, 
we have to obtain the public key certificates in this key and type one type. So for example, in case you want to get the public key certificate to a web server, TLS web server, your public key certificate should be in the type of key and type. So then there is a type called data and type. So for example, if you use the public key certificate for email like encrypting documents, so then your public key certificate should be in the data enticement type. Similarly, there is a type called key certificate signature. Key certificate signature refers to a certification method. So you can get a public key certificate from someone else to certifying the public key of someone else as well. I'll discuss that in detail. So that is called key in a minute later on in this section. So it's called it as key certificate signature type. And then there is the set of documents, what we call certificate revocation list for the CRM. So we need to get the public key. Uh, if you want to issue CRM, we need to get the public key on certificate on that type. And public key certificates also used for exchanging the software, what we call the object, the object. Then you need to have public keys in object signing type. Basically, when you get a certificate, uh for in the certification authority so that certificate can be used for multiple types so for example most of the public key certificates when you is getting it it is in the digital signature key and cipher and data enticement these three types by default is included if you get a public key certificate for your certification authority so they are usually in these three types key and type key certificate signature CRL signatures and object signing types. You will understand those things uh, in in a minute when I describe it in detail. Right. So again, the I repeat the story. So we need to dis distribute session keys. So in order to distribute session keys, we use public private key system or the symmetric key system. So there we use public key of identity uh, to distribute those session keys. So when you use public key of identity, you need to make sure those end entities public key really belong to them. So in other words, when Alice want to use Bob's public key, Alice should know that public key actually Bob's. So for that, we introduce a authority, call it as a certification authority. Role of the certification authority is to is to issue a document what we call as public key certificate to the entity that is Bob and Alice. So those call it as public key certificate. So we have discussed the details of public key certificates as well, fields and so on. So those public key certificates contains the public key of an entity. So those certificates are certified by the certification authority kind of authority call it as certification authority. So those certification authority after certifying those public keys, they will distribute. Then, so the people who want to use those public key has to fetch that public key certificate. So in other words, when Alice wants to, uh, uh, when Alice wants the Bob's public key, Alice gets the Bob's certificate. Maybe Alice can get the Bob certificates from Bob, or maybe Web Certification Authority, or maybe from anyone else. So when uh, Alice gets that, Alice has to verify the authenticity of this public key. So for example, Alice, when he gets it, he needs to verify this is public key. He needs to verify the signature of this public key using the public key of certification authority. So as I mentioned previously, then we need to have a mechanism to obtain the public key of public key of the certification authority. So, so we have introduced the uh, certification authority to solve the distribution of the public key of an entity. As you may understood, now we are ended up with the problem of how do you distribute the public key of certification authorities. So, how? So, 
So as you understood, or you, as you may heard, publicity certificates are widely used in practice, in practical cryptographic application. So in this, how to distribute the certificate authority public keys are kind of problematic. So how do you do so? So in practically what we do is we are hard coding. We are hard coding public key certificates of certification authorities into our applications. So, and sometimes we might use some other certification authorities to certify in the public key of these certificates. So then obviously this other certification authority public key how to distribute is the problem. So in addition to that, in this public key business, there are problems of how do you cancel those public keys and so on. I will discuss that uh, towards the end. Right. I said we, we include the request you saw. That means we have to properly distribute public keys. For that, we have introduced the certification authority. Certification authority certifying those public keys used in their private key. So in order to verify these public key certificates, we need to distribute the public key or public key of certification authority. So then I repeatedly ask, how do you go to distribute those public key certificate public key of public key certificate authority or the public key of CA? Simple way of doing it, it's hard code. So even when you hard code it, we need to properly embed this public key into some format. The way we do it, the certification authority usually issue a public key certificate certifying their public key itself. So such public key certificate, call it as a self-signed public key certificate or call it as a root certificate, root certificate. Root certificates included the public key of certification authority, usually. So anyone can issue a root certificate, that's uh, not only the public key certificate authority, but even N entities can issue the root certificate. That means N entity is self certifying its public. There are no CA. Similarly, if the public key certificate can certify <coughs> their public key itself. So that's called as source certificate. Okay. So maybe I will show you uh, some examples where you may realize how it works. For that, uh, I might use the Firefox browser. So, so some of you, actually most of you, I guess, using uh, Firefox browser. Uh, let me share my Firefox browser uh, to show how this uh, certificate uh, business works in practical life. Uh, right. Uh, so I think I share my Firefox browser here. So you see that. So when this Firefox browser, you can go to the edit preference. So when you go to the edit preference of Firefox browser, so you may see a tag called privacy and security tag. Go to the end of that tag and you may see a button called view certificate. So in this view certificate button shows the public key certificate showed by this particular browser, that is Firefox or this particular application. So in this uh, view certificate or the certificate manager, window has four tabs, your certificate, paper certificate, server certificate, and authority certificate. Your certificate is the public key certificate issued to you and stored in this browser for your application, your web application. And the paper certificates are the certificate which is belongs to your recipients. And the server certificates are the certificates belong to some of the, the servers you temporarily store in this. And the authority certificates are the cert public key certificate of the authority. So in this browser may not have any certificates belong to me so far. And it has a lot of 
authority certificates. So those authority certificates pre-installed by the Firefox distribution. So similarly, the different operating system distributions, uh, different browser distributions comes with the bundle of public key certificates of the CA. So these are the public key of certification authorities. So that consists maybe hundreds of public keys. So for example, Amazon Certification Authority, Atlas Authority, Paltimo Authority, like that there are so many such signs and maybe like a very sign, maybe you heard about it, very side international, very side public key certification authority and so on. So those are the certification authorities. All the certification authorities, most famous certification authorities, public keys are encoded or the included in the application distribution. So that's how they by default distribute the certification authority public keys. Let me open one of these public key certificates to show you how it looks like. So this is how this certificate looks like. So this certificate you see uh, has some usages they have defined and it says this certificate issue to this very sign class one public key certification authority G3 for very sign international very sign trusted network is the organization unit. So these are this is the issue. That means the name of the certification authority. So then so this, this, this is issue two. So that means this is the certification authority name. So this public key is certified by issued by this guy. So who is that? So very sign public key authority, very sign international, very sign password. That means so the issue to and issued by are the same. So that means they are self signed. Self-signing means self-certifying. In other words, the same organization tells this public is me. Right? So it's issued on 1999, as you may see, expires on 2036. 2036. Right? Now it's this public is issued over now 20 years old. So it might, the very sign this organization might use this public key for kind of another 15 years to certifying the public key of end entities. Public key of end entities. You can check the detail of this public key as well. So you see, there is a version number. This is version one. Right now in the version three, this is a very old version. So but we still use. Uh, this is a serial number, you see. This is this document, signature algorithm. Because the digital, this is a digitally signed document, it has a signature algorithm. Signature algorithm consists of two parts. Because as you know, when you sign a document, first of all, we have to calculate the hash. Then we encrypt the hash with the private key that is called signing, right? So this is called certificate signature algorithm. So you see it has two parts. So this is used SHA-1 algorithm, with RSA, SHA-1 hashing with RSA, right? So this is signature algorithm. So you see issuer information is given here. So you see this is the attributes which I mentioned, country, C means country, O refers to organization, O refers to organization unit. We can have multiple OUs and CN refers to common name, right? It says, very sign international, whatever, whatever, organization unit in US. This is issuer. So then there is a validity period. It, this certificate issued somewhere in 1999, and they are planning to use it till 2036. And when you look at the subject, so subject is similar to issuer. Subject is similar to issuer. For, from that information, you can identify that is a self signed public key certificate or root certificate or in other words it's self-certified public key self-certified public key so then it has a field called sub subject public key information so that is the public key information so there we have to tell it is which kind of public key cryptography algorithm so this is a RSA 
public key and this is the public key information so these are the numbers you see e and n encoded and it has a 2048 bit public key right so this e and n here so this is signing algorithm as in the previous also i show that so this is the digital signature this is the digital signature of this particular document the encrypted hash digital signature of particular document that's how basically how root certificate look like public key certificate of a ca looks like it is a what we call it as self signed certificate so such self signed certificate or root certificate can be generated by anyone anyone so for example if i want to create a public key certificate say it's very sign i can put those parameters and i can generate those keys i know those fields i can create a bogus certificate or very sign so then if if then i can replace that with this how, how? so you see in this certificate manager button i have a button called uh, delete so i can delete it and i can create a bogus one and then maybe import it to that so then so i can put my bogus very signed certificate there so then you may understand later on i also describe so if then if a public key is certified by real very sign received for this browser that browser will reject that because so browsers when receive a public key certificate they they are going to verify the signature using the public key mentioned here if that public key is changed so this verification fails so the public key is certified by my bogus ga will verify because so that now my public key is there so in other words this particular browser when they receive a public key certificate from an entity so they verify the signatures using those public keys stored here right they are hard coded into the browser so those hard coded public key certificates can delete and change so that is real serious issue in 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 the security point of view right maybe i will show you how the web server certificates may be look like so there are two somehow installed in this particular browser if i have a look at i got some public key certificate called digital notoriety root ca so it's also a self sign you see issue two issued by it's sign kind of root certificate is authority self sign so that is not a ca it's a, some kind of web server certificate authority somehow ended up in this browser i have no idea how it happens here so which trusted by this browser so even web servers can issue self signed certificate not only the certification authority right so far i don't have us or the paper certificate towards the end i will show you how to create such and put it here right so you i think get a simple feeling about how the public key certificates look like right i will back to my presentation uh here we are right so you know now you see so now root certificate so in practically sometimes we have the public key certification infrastructure or what we call pci public key certification infrastructure pci consists of not only single ca's but in multiple ca's <coughs> if you have multiple ca's in such infrastructure we call it as hierarchical certification infrastructure especially government organizations maintain such hierarchical certification infrastructure Uh, so in these infrastructures uh, hierarchical certification infrastructures you see there are entities so like a and b so they have public private keys so they are private keys so in their machine 
and they are publicly certified by the CA. Then there are public private keys for the CA. So there are CA's private key store in the CA's machine. CA's public key certified by some other CA, right? So that can be done. So maybe some other CA certifying the public key of this CA. So then this CA has public private key. So then somehow some, some person has to certify the public key of this CA. So what we can do here, yeah. in this scenario here, this CA don't have any other higher CA is certifying the public key instead of this CA certifying the public key itself. So that's called it has root certificate or the self signed certificate. So that is the boss, top guy. So this top guy has a root certificate or the self signed certificate. It has the public key certified by itself. So this need to be trusted by everybody. If that can replace so entire trust network has issue. So usually what we do, we hard code or bundle this root CA into our application. That's how we are distributing this root CA certificates or the self-signed public key. So if it is trusted, so we can assume the public key of this is trusted, public key of this CA is trusted. If that public key of this CA is trusted, Whatever the document signed by this CA it should be trusted. So that means public key of A should be trusted. In other words, let's assume B received the public key certificate of A. B has to verify who's certifying the public key of A. In other words, B has to verify who tells public key of A is correct. So then we may understand there are certification authority here. That certification authority is assured the trust of this public key. So then we have to verify who tells the public key of this CA is correct. Otherwise, if this public key is incorrect, so this verification fails. So then we have to verify who tells this is correct. So then we Understood? Okay, there is a higher level certification authority verify uh, or the certify the public key of this CA. So then we have to verify who tells this higher level CA's public key is correct. So then we realize, okay, nobody else tells it. This higher level certificate itself tells that. And we understood this is a self sign. And this self-signed public key in top CA should be kind of obtained by B in a trusted manner. If someone kind of cheated it, so entire chain fails, and the attackers can kind of cheat B very easily. I will tell you how people do it in the in my last lecture. In the next week. Right. Right. So after that, if that is trusted by the B, so since it is trusted, that public key gets trusted. If it is trusted, this public key is trusted. So then we can access kind of be, 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 be sure this is a public key and we can use it. So this scenario or this way of configuration is called as certification hierarchy or hierarchical certification infrastructure. Usually governments use that. So for example, some countries, so there are central certification authority, rules authority set up by the government. So those certification authority issue the public key, certify the public keys of different uh, ministries of the government, and those ministries certifying their uh, end users. So like that, sometimes governments like hierarchical organizations use hierarchical certification infrastructure. I have shown you the browser, right? Browser, I saw some, I, I already show you uh, self-signed certificate. In the browsers, 
we may rarely see hierarchical certification infrastructure. In the browser or the web applications, we are using what we call flat certification infrastructure. Flat certification infrastructure has self sign certification authorities basically installed in the browser. Maybe hundreds of self sign certification authorities installed in the browser itself. So those authorities certify end users. End users mean web servers and the web users. So each CA certifying them independently. So end use, whoever people use those public key certificates need to trust those CAs installed in the browser. So entire public key certificate or the entire security depend on that. So that is the real practical uh, situation where I should uh, we understand. Cryptography is fine. They use very good algorithms. They properly work. However, when we practically use those cryptographic algorithms, we, we have practical issues. So I repeat from the beginning, the practical issues we are facing. First practical issue, issue we face, how to distribute the symmetric keys. We have introduced the solution for that. So solution was, Distribute these symmetric keys using the public key system. Then we have a problem of how do you distribute those public keys? So if you properly distribute the public keys, then we can distribute the symmetric keys, then then you can use the symmetric key cryptography to encrypt the channel. Fine. So then how do you properly distribute the public keys? So that the, we introduce the solution that we call certification authority. So the certification authorities are the organization certifying those public keys of end users. So solution is fine, so it works, but we are ended up with the problem, how do you distribute the public key of those certification authorities? So the answer for that is very, very kind of neutral. So we don't have proper answer for it. So how do you distribute the public key of certification authorities? It's a very primitive. We hard coding into the box. Or we hard coding into our application, any other application. So some people hard code in hierarchical certificates, that are CS. Some people use flat certificates, like browsers. Browser industry, they use a flat certification infrastructure. Yeah. So as you may understood, so entire Security depends on those public keys. I will show you later on how it, how, how serious it is. Right. So in the public key distribution architecture, so what we call public infrastructure, we discuss two types of methods we can use. One is called hierarchical system. Other one is called flat system. Then there are other alternative hierarchical certification infrastructure. So that called as a trust hierarchy. So especially this method used by the email system called PGP, pretty good privacy, especially used to encrypt and exchange uh, uh, email. Uh, PGP is kind of first practical application of cryptography on the internet before the SSL or the TLS, PGP was there. Uh, pretty good privacy, don't use the concept of public key infrastructure, the CA certification authority. In there, end users exchange the public key themselves. So, if, for example, they are Alice, Bob, A, B, C, D end users in the system, which they use public private keys uh, to exchange the emails, secure emails using the PGP. So, in this situation, let's say Bob wants to send a mail to Alice. So then Bob needs the public key of Alice. So then Bob has to access public key of Alice. So in the standard solution, so there should be a authority called certification authority certifying the public key of Alice. This alternative trust system or the PGP system, there are no certification authorities. In the PGP system, Bob has to find it out, are there any other users 
uh, accepting this public key as Alice public key. So then perhaps Bob knows those users, Bob can also access. So for example, already in this uh, system, Bob knows user B and D. Bob accepts the public key of user B and D already. So in other words, B and D is the friend of Bob. Bob knows them. Bob's personal knows them. And Bob somehow got the public key of A and B manually in, in most cases. And then Bob accepts those public keys B and D already in the system. Then Bob to see whether A, B and D knows about Alice. Then perhaps since I know B and D, I can uh, accept the Alice public key because Alice public key is accepted by my friend. So in this diagram, it shows no. B and D doesn't know about it. But B and D doesn't know about some other user called A and C. And A and C know about Alice. So it's, it's kind of web of trust, right? So it's, it's kind of practical life in scenario. We know to find some person, so we directly don't know about him, but one of our friends knows about him. So since my friend is knows about him, I can identify him or I can say he's my friend, right? Since he is friend of mine. So, sorry. I have a friend, so he has another friend. So since B is my friend, right? A, A is B's friend. Alice is A's friend. Maybe I can, Alice may be my friend. Something like that, right? It's a social, social trust in structure. So there are no TAs, so it's entirely up to end user to trust the public key of each other. So I can directly obtain the public keys from the people I know, or I can tell people I know to certifying the public key of their friend. And maybe I can accept those public keys as correct public keys. Like that, I can collect the public key through my friend. It's called it as web of trust structure. So that is used by the email system called PGP. It's not used on the internet communication. Internet communication, we are using a protocol called TLS. It's entirely based on the certification infrastructure that is flat infrastructure. Flat, flat infrastructure. This one. Uh, the flat infrastructure. Right. So I mentioned that governments use hierarchical certification infrastructure. So it has several certification authorities. Like there is a user called B and there are several CEs. And this is root or the top level certification authority. Let's say there are two different governments. So this is one government and this is another government which use two different certification hierarchies in, within their country. So then if that two countries A and B wants to kind of have proper secure communication, so how do you exchange this trust? So in the certification infrastructure business, there is a concept called cross certification. In the concept cross certification describes how to exchange the trust between the certification authorities. So for example, this is a one. So if A is in one, one authority, B is in the another authority. B wants to accept an email from A or whatever public key from A. So B has to make sure whether that A's public key is correct. So then he check who issued it, certificates and so on to the top. So finally, B may end up with the self-signed certificate here. So BC, there is a person here, self-signed, and he certified this CA, he certified this CA, he certified that CA, and this CA certified the public key of A. None of them is trusted by this. 
right? Then how we can accept this public key? No way to accept. If we want to accept that public key, we has to lay, by build a link to what he trusted. Actually, we trusted this certification authority or it's what it's through CA. So this root certification authority CA is the CA hard coded in this browser or any other application of B. So if we receive a public key, we has to build the link to his root CA. So for example, if B wants to accept A's public key, this CA has to tell this is correct. How do you make sure that? The concept is we make sure that it's called as cost certification. In the cost certification concept, what happens? So this root CA certifying the public key of this root CA and that root CA certifying the public key of this. So that means top certification authorities certifying their public key each other. So in that means, this CA has two public key certificates. One is self-signed, that means he, he himself certifying his public key, and one certificate is certified by the other certificate. This certification authority also certifies his public key. Similarly, that root CA has two public key certificates. One is self-signed or certified by him itself. Other one, is certified by this year. If that happens, cross certification happens, then we can break the trust. So, for example, if we receive the public key of the A, we see who's telling it. We notice this CA. We don't want to trust that. We see who telling that public key of this CA correct. We notice this CA is telling it. And then he further verifies. Who tells that public key is correct? We realize this CA is telling it. And then we further verify who tells it correct. We realize this CA is correct and tells that. And we want to, we don't want to trust that. And we also then search further and see whether who tells that public key is correct. And we realize this CA itself tells that plus this certification authority also tells that public key is correct. And then we verify who tells that public key is correct. Then we realize, okay, that is my boss, my root C, and I must trust this. That C is hard coded into my boss. So then I know this is correct public. So then he realized this public key is correct. If it is correct, this public key must correct. If it is correct, this public key must correct. If so, this is correct. If so, this is correct. Finally, he realized public key of A is correct public key, and then we can accept A's public key as correct public key, and then use that to establish the session. As you may see, so establishing the session is so simple, but distributing the public keys are really complicated. So in order to establish those sessions, we have to distribute the public keys somehow practically. So that's how we do that using the public key certification authority. So in this public key certification authorities, or what we call public key infrastructures, PKI systems, has many other complications. The, the next most uh, vulnerable complication is what we call it as certificate revocation. So for example, if someone uh, generated public keys and get certified they are public key from the certification authority assume that and later on let's say I lost my private key so I have public key certificate issued by some CA but I lost my private key so then what's going to happen if I lost my private key maybe due to several reasons maybe my machine crashed or some hacker hacked into my machine and taken out my private key. So can, that can also happen. So some people hacked and get my private key. Then my, my public key certified by certification authority and distributed to entire world. So entire world might use my public key, but I don't have access to my private key. Then I, how I can then access to my data? I can't because entire world 
will encrypt the data to me where I cannot decrypt if I lost my private key. If someone has taken my private key, entire world will encrypt the data to me. I, my private key has taken by someone else. So not only me, someone else will be encrypting my information. So we need to stop that. So that means if my private key is lost or compromised, I have to inform it to the world. How can I do that? So that usually happens through a method called certificate revocation. Certificate revocation is the mechanism introduced by the certification authority, some very primitive mechanism introduced by the certification authority to disseminate the knowledge of lost and compromise private key. In other words, if I lost my or compromise my private key, immediately I must contact the corresponding certification authority and inform them my private key has lost. So they have to immediately cancel my public key certificate. How do they cancel it? They put my put the serial number of my public key certificate into a list, which call it as certificate district revocation list. Certificate revocation list. The certification authorities periodically issuing such certificate revocation list. This certificate revocation list consists of cancel or revoke public key certificate information. So those lists usually is huge because, because it has public keys revoked in within entire world during that period. Okay? So those, anybody who wants to use the public keys, after verifying the signature of this public key certificate, actually has to contact the certification authority and see whether this public key certificate is revoked or not. So how, how can it done? So let's say the application web browser, receive a public key certificate from a web server, so he first need to verify the signature of this public key certificate. That means who is issued that. He might realize some CA issued it. And then he has to verify whether that CA's public key is correct. Then he realize, okay, that CA's public key is shown in his browser. And he can accept that as correct. So after that, this browser has to check whether this public key he receives is revoked or not, or cancelled or not. So for that, he has to contact his CEA. Each CEA has a URL, what he calls certificate distribution, uh, CRL distribution point, or C CRL distribution URL. So it is usually included in the certification CA certificate. So the application has to receive this URL and fetch this certificate revocation list. And then see whether the public key certificate he issued, he received in this list. If so, he should recheck that public key. If it is not in the list, he should accept this public key for the communication. That means in case of web, web server browser example, for the communication of TLS protocol, that is SSL or TLS protocol where we heavily use in day-to-day -day application. Right? So that is the proper method to do so. But as usually you realize, if you want to do such thing, we need to, we, we have to spend some time because to verify it, fetch the CRLs, so those CRLs are heavy, there is a bandwidth usage and so on. But when you browse in the web application or the internet, we may, we may see those web browsers accepting the 
web servers publicly very fast and establish in TLS session very fast. We may even notice that kind of verification goes in the background. So that is actually most of the web browsers they are not verifying the public key certificates against the certificate revocation list. That means they are not verifying whether the public key they received revoked or not. Because if they try to do so, it takes time. So they, in other words, that means we might accepting in our web application some revoked public key. So actually there is a solution introduced a couple of years ago for this uh, simplify this CRL distribution. The solution was called Online Certificate Status Protocol or the OCSP protocol. So let's call it as OCSP scrap link. So some people recommend it, some people are not recommended in using this OCSP scrap link because they have some issues and so on. So idea is introducing another authority called OCSP servers trusted by the organization and outsource public key certificate verification to those OCSP servers. That means within some organization, we can set it up OCSP server. OCSP server is the authority who verifying the validity of the public key on behalf of this particular organization. So all the application of this organization can configure the OCSP server to outsource their verification. So whenever the application within this organization receive a public key, they pass that public key to this OCSP server. So OCSP servers may verify the authenticity of the public key using the CRLS, all CRLS, CRLS he prefetched and all other information he gathered. So then OCSP servers may tell this public key certificate is a good reward for unknown. Good means this is we can accept as a correct public key. Revoke means <coughs> we have to reject. Unknown means we don't know. It's a new public key certificate or the new CA which are not aware about the OCSP server. So actually this OCSP is not solve this certificate revocation problem. That kind of the solution with outsource this certificate verification. Still the revoke certificates are identified by the CRL. So then OCSP servers has to fetch CRLs. But identities don't need to fetch. OCSP servers can pre-fetch. So then kind of we source the bandit issues and so on. But still, OCSP servers depend on the certificate revocation list issued by CAs to verify the uh, to to verify the uh, certificate. So the CRL certificate revocation list periodically issued. I mentioned by the CA. So since they are periodically issued, though during that period. So for example, if the certificate is revoked, let's say, beginning of the month, so the, the particular CA is issuing CRS, let's say, at end of every month. So then, if a certificate revoked at the beginning, may introduce to the world at the end of the month. So for example, if my certificate revoked, let's say, today, uh, uh, compromised today, then I have to inform my CA today itself, but the CA announces it to the world maybe end of this month on 29th. So then during that week, coming week, for example, my public key compromise today, and then until it appears on the CRL, so the attacker has the ability to use my private key. So there are no answer for this. So that's how we are using this cryptography practically in our application. So, so people are searching for some answers for those problems in these public key infrastructures. They have, uh, they are trying to build different other protocols. I have listed a few of them. Some of those protocols are obsolete. 
some of the MP protocols still people try to build a proper way of verifying the public key. In general, we have a problem of distributing public key of the certification authority. So we have a problem of distributing the system keys of the symmetric key systems. We solve it using public key cryptography. So then we ended up with the problem of how do you distribute in the public key. We introduced a solution for that. It's called using the certification authority. So, so using the certification authorities, we can nicely distribute the public key. Thus, we can distribute the session keys. But finally, we ended up with a problem. How do you distribute in the public key of certification authority? So distributing this public key of certification authority, we don't have a proper answer yet. So people do it in different ways. So recently, some of the uh, open source people group have introduced some protocol for automatic certificate management environment for the ACMB protocol. So ACMB protocol also try to solve this problem somehow. How do you automate the certificate assurance process? CA certificate plus the certificate of the identity. How do you kind of automate it by overcoming the problems which I discussed? So, ACME uh, uh, protocol kind of implemented by some open source applications like Apache Web Server, I think now they support ACME. And then some of the certification authorities in the world, I will discuss later on some authority called less than they are using ACME like that. So people kind of slowly adapting this ACME protocol to as a solution for distributing of public key of CA. So right now, that is the situation. So we have, I, if I repeat, we have a problem of distributing public keys of certification authority. So even though we have this problem, we are practically using this public key cryptographic system. We are practically use this hybrid cryptographic application. We are practically using this key establishment or data encryption protocols such as PLS, uh, SSH, SSH, and PGP, and so on. So in the next lecture, which I want to discuss that few such protocols and discuss how we use it in practical, how do you use cryptography practically in those applications in my last lecture, which I'm going to discuss. So before I end up with the lecture today, I want to show you how do we create our own certification authority if you wish. You can run your own CA. You can certify your public key of your end users and so on. So if you want to use do so, you can simply use OpenSSL. OpenSSL is the first class highly recommended cryptographic library in the world. So it, using that, you can do anything according to the person standard. So I will simply show you how do you create a certification authority using just OpenSSL commands. Those OpenSSL commands are a little complicated. Because of that, I use some scripts. I will anyway upload those scripts uh, to my GitHub. So you can download those scripts and try it out yourself. So let me demonstrate how to create your own certification authority and how to issue a certificate to yourself. So, so you can try that yourself as well. So let me share my uh, terminal to demonstrate that. Right. Uh, so I think you see my terminal. So in this, uh, I have some scripts created. So you see there are three scripts I created called create CA, create 
host certificate, create user certificate. So create CA script will set up a simple certification authority using OpenSSL. So I will show the script here, which I created. You see it has some uh, commands, right? Like make directory, I'm setting up directory structure to store the certificates and few OpenSSL commands, you see. So this command will create a certification certification authority for yourself, right? So you can further study these commands later on. Uh, instead of uh, issuing these commands separately, I'll run my script, create CA. So when I run that script, so it set up a directory called SSLCA, create a directory called SSLCA. All certificates are stored in this directory. Private key of the CA is stored there. Newly issued certificates stored there. Like that, it automatically create the directory structure to store private keys and public key certificates under this particular CA which we about to create. So <coughs> then this OpenSSL command has created public private key paper key pair for your certification authority and ask the password to protect the private key. So I have given some password to protect the private key of this CA. So then OpenSSL store the private key of the CA. Now OpenSSL wants to create a self-signed certificate of this CA. For that it has some attributes. That is the values for distinguished names attributes which we discussed. So it asks, what is your country name? It's a two-letter country code. I use Sri Lanka. Two-letter country code is LK. And my province, a Western. My locality is Kalam. If you want to uh, change that, you can type that here at the prompt. If you want to use those parameters as it is, you just press enter. My organization is University of Colombo. Organization unit is School of Compute. And then I ask the common name. I say, okay, my simple CA, simple CA of UCSC. Well, you can use whatever your name. If you want, you can say very sign certification authority here. Anything. So you press enter. I skip the email address. So that's it. So then the script has created self signed public key certificate. It is in the text format called uh, PEM format, privacy and not mail format, the text format of storing the public key self signed certificate. So when I press enter, it stopped the uh, process. So this is my uh, private key and the public key. All done. So this is the private key. This is the public key certificate, public key certificate, you see. So this is self-signed public key certificate for the certification of those. When you look at the directory structure after run that script, you may say it created the directory called SSLCA. Inside that, you may there are these certificates installed. You can go there and see, like, when you change the directory to SSLCA, you see it has several files created. You can explore yourself those files. Right. Now, using that CA, I want to issue a public key certificate to myself. So for that, I have created a script called create user set set script. So when you have a look at this script, let's look at this script. So you see it has a couple of open SSL commands. So this first command is creating what we call it as a certification request. So which submit to the CA. And then CA will certify in the public key of this, uh, in, including the certification request using this second command here, this command here. After created the certificate, 
So that certificate is exported into the format called PKCS12 format. PKCS12 is the common standard which refers to public key cryptography standard number 2 and PKCS12. Format is a common standard used to store the private keys, public keys, PS certificates together into a single one. When you create a PKCS12 file, it consists of our private key, my, my, our public key, and the certification authority public key all together in one single file, protected by a password. So that so what we call PKCS12 so can be imported into any application. Most of the standard application which use public key cryptography support this PKCS12 format, even any vendor like uh, Microsoft, Apple, and so on, Mac, and so on. So after I run this command, you might see it will create a public key certificate request. So that request will automatically search by my own CA and issue a public key certificate to myself. And then after issuing that, it will be exported to the PKCS 12 format. Let me run that script. Right. So it's created two key pairs for me. Now it asks distinguish names attributes of myself in order to issue a public key certificate to me. So I, my country is LK, province is correct, uh, locality is Colombo, organization name is University of Colombo, Unity School of Computing. Okay, my common name is Kazun Designer, right? It has email address. My email address is Kazun D. Soisa at gmail uh, dot com. Right. So it's taken the all attributes. Now it has some extra uh, attributes. I skip that. Optional companions. I skip all. So now my CA is going to certify my public key. So my CA is running myself. So I have created just minutes ago. So then in order to uh, certify my public key, my CA need to access this private key. I have given a password to protect the private key of CA a minute ago. I must give this password here. So after I give this password, my CA is certifying my public key and issue a public key certificate to me. So these are the parameters. You see the parameters which I just entered. This is my subject name of the CA, right? And it just issued today and valid until that and so on. So then it asks whether uh, I want to sign it. So I say yes, I want to sign it. So then the certificate is created. So then it asks whether I want to confirm it, certify and confirm it. I say yes. So then CA has issued the certificate, it's completed. After that, I want to export my CA private key and the CA certificate of the CA everything into a PKCS12 format. So that file is protected by a password. So the system has a password to protect PKCS12 file. So I entering the exporting password twice. All done. So it exported the file. So when you look at the directory now, so you may see a couple of the files in addition to the SSLCA directory. So you see a file called certificate request file. So that is the file initially created by OpenSSK. That is in the format called public key cryptography standard number seven. That is called user request file. Public key certificate request file. You can have a look, all our text files. User request file. So you see it's called certificate request. So this is the standard public key certificate request, which must, which should be pub submit to a certification authority. You can even submit that request to a VeriSign or any other commercial certification authority. They can decode that request and issue a public key certificate to you. 
after paying them, right? So the OCA is your own, so you don't need to pay. So your CA automatically identifies that and issue a public key certificate to you. So that public key is in this file. So if you have a look on this file, so this is the, your public key which just issued to you, right? So you can, you see this is issued to me, which I type those information, right? Alambu and Owen issue. This is issue. This is a CA certification authority which I just created. This is subject issued to me. So this is my name. Just I given those details. So this is my certificate file. Right? So this is my certificate request file. Where they store the private key? This is my private key file. So my private key is there. I must protect this file. So if some attack has taken that, they can take and my private key. So begin private key and private key. This is my private key. Right. So these are the files created. These three files. What is that? This is the bundle which I mentioned. PKCS12 file. It usually call it as PFX file. So this PFX extension and the PFX file format understand by any browser uh, plus any operating system because it's parallel format. So I will show you. I will input this file into a Firefox browser and show you it. It accepted by the Firefox as a regular public key certificate. So I will share my uh, Firefox browser now back. Uh, Browser back. So this is my Firefox browser. I go to the certificate management window. You see, in your certificate, you don't have any certificate, but I just created the certificate for myself. So I'm going to import it. So I press import button. I go to the directory where I just created the certificate. It's under org cd run uh, cryptography class. Uh, this is open directly. So you see, Firefox understand this user PFX file. You pick that and open it. So when you want to open it, it asks the password because it's password protected file. So the password I have given at the time of execution. So let me give the password. Oh, great. So it's now it imported my public key into the browser. So after that, my browser has my public key certificate which can use for web application. So let, let me view that. If I view it, it says you could not verify that. Firefox says you could not verify this because the user is unknown. Obviously, because this Firefox, Firefox application, they don't know about my CA. How do they know? They don't know because I just created a minute ago. This is my CA, on CA. Firefox have no idea about that CA. So, I have to introduce my CA to the Firefox then. So, how can I do that? So, when I import this bundle, actually my CA certificate is also imported into the browser under authority tab. So, when you search for this authority for your CA name, organization name you might see that my CA organization called UCSC CA let's see somewhere here you see simple CA of UCSC which I just created right it is in the Firefox but it is put it into this tab under this authority tab but still not trusted by the Firefox so I have to force the Firefox to accept it as a trusted root certificate or trusted self signed certificate. So how can I do that? So I click that and press edit trust. So then I say this certificate can identify, identify website, this certificate can identify email users, uh, and ask the Firefox to trust this CA by clicking this one, two buttons. After that, my CA certificate is accepted as trusted certification authority by this particular Firefox browser. So I can make sure that by viewing it, 
So when you view that, it says, okay, this is 35 has been verified for the following you uh, following things, SSL certification authority. So it's verified. So it's a simple CA which I just created. This is my CA now trusted by Firefox. So since it is trusted by Firefox now, my CA is trusted. It should accept my certificate as trusted public key. So now let's do it. Oh, now see, it says it's verified. It's verified for SSL and other things. So that means it accepted as my certificate I just created as trusted public key certificate. So you see in a minute, you can set it up the how CA certification authority is using open SSL and issuing the certificate to the end users like you and me. Plus it can issue the certificate to the browsers as uh, the web servers as well. If you want to issue the certificate to the web servers, there is a other script in the folder called user uh, create host certificate script in this folder, which I demonstrated. Uh, so you can execute that. That script will issue the certificate to the web server. I will upload those scripts uh, to my GitHub. And based on these scripts, I will give a small activity for this thing. So where you can generate, uh, you can create your own certification authority and issue the certificates uh, to you and your web servers and so on. Uh, based on that script, I will give you some small activity. All right, I think that is uh, the end of the lecture today. So, this is a discussion time now. <laughs>